we're in, in the physical chemistry course. Our goal is to predict outcomes of the instrumental measurements of materials and molecules. And uh, the current subject is, oh, hello, Alison. Nice seeing you connected. And uh, our current uh, chapter goal is uh, so-called particle in the box, which describes, approximately describes <coughs> small area of space where electrons are localized due to attraction by positive ions, right? Uh, last time we solved time independent Schrodinger equation and found the eigen energies and eigen functions, right? Which uh, we may try to memorize or which we will memorize naturally by uh, practicing this uh, states again and again. So eigenfunctions are signs, right? Or it was different uh, period, more and more nodal points. Uh, and energies escalate as a uh, square of the number, right? So they, they become more and more offset. Oh, Nate, N nice seeing you. Uh, so, Suppose you all are professors and we have a departmental meeting on building a or curriculum committee. We want to develop a curriculum for this course. And now we do have uh, the <coughs> options. So we already applied the uh, time independent Schrodinger equation and we learned what are the eigenstates and uh, eigen energies. Uh, now we do have options, either to immediately jump to other system and like crazy uh, cover larger number of models uh, and for all of them solve, uh, find eigenfunctions and eigenenergies. And then uh, whoever listens to this class becomes uh, an like encyclopedia of solving Schrodinger equation or uh, we can uh, plan on uh, slowing down, focusing on the same model for a longer time, but learn it deeper. Uh, for example, to explore what would happen if it is perturbed by light, what would happen if a uh, si uh, system is prepared not in one of the eigenstates, but in the uh, mixture of them. And uh, uh, another option is to check what would happen if this box is not one dimensional, but more, more complicated shape. So uh, what is your feeling? What, what would be the better? Just blindly jump through different models or uh, focus uh, and cover one of the models uh, deeper. Depth or breadth? Who is for breadth? Who is for one? Who is for depth? Two, three, other do not care. By majority of votes, we accept to go into the depth. <laughs> okay, so um, the subject uh, that we will cover today, based on this little uh, game of playing, playing votes, uh, will be depth and it will be closely related to the next homework and to the stuff that we will do this uh, night at the, at the lab. So uh, we will consider what happens if the model, if this particle in the box or system that this particle in the box represents is prepared in the excited state. Suppose, um, so everything in energy follows least action principle, least energy, right? So if there is only one electron, one box, this electron will want so badly to come into the ground state like coach potato. I do not want to do anything, right? But uh, we want to excite it and see what happens. And if you just excite it to the second state, it will be boring. We know it will stay there. But we are going to do uh, something unusual. We, we want to practice all bells and whistles of quantum theory and excite it by 50%. So, uh, which is also possible. 
So partially excited, partially non-excited and see what happens. Why are we going to do it? In the previous chapter, uh, you became experts of vacuum, experts of the electron in the free space. And you know that it, it moves with constant velocity and expands. Now we see we, we have two barriers where this electron is bumping to. And we want to interpret uh, based on intuition and maybe then support mathematically or, or computationally um, the process of, of this electronic distribution bumping into the wall, reflecting back, and then maybe bouncing force and back. Right? So we expect the center of this distribution going forth and back. And uh, if, I'm, I'm talking too much, I should just shut up and show slides. <laughs> um, if uh, we accept Newtonian mechanics and we have a tennis ball without gravitation, without resistance of air, that bumps into one wall and into another, into another. So it will be moving on the straight line. Then instantaneously change velocity to the opposite and goes to the opposite. So it will be straight lines. Um, hypothetically, we can formulate our question whether the center of the packet will uh, move as function of tennis, one straight line, another straight line, another straight line, or it will show another shape. Make sense? Whew. Okay. Now I will be more formal and just share slides. Wait, it's not, it's not focused. I, I'm, I do not keep uh, hopes that anyone wants to see me on the recording, but just in case, if I, if I need to show something on, on the screen, it's better to focus on the, in this area. Okay, so time independent uh, solution. Uh, here is uh, our favorite homework that basically we will complete by attending the lab tonight. And uh, we are browsing in the space of um, methods, real um, objects that you model by these methods. And sometimes we apply light. So we, we are aware of evolution operator, Schrodinger time independent, time dependent, Heisenberg equation of motion. And um, today we will briefly mention one more method, which is really well suited for time dependent phenomena, which is called density matrix. Uh, so here are the equations uh, that we started memorizing last time, right? And if you want to catch me lying, telling wrong things, er making errors or, and get extra credit, you may look into sources starting from Wikipedia, checking if there, is, if there is a factor to here. So uh, by solving boundary conditions, we got um, idea that instead of exponentials, it will be only sign. And um, here is the plan or a summary uh, which I want to add. If the center will move linearly and uh, instantly change velocity to, to the opposite. So whether, whether we will have this uh, motion of the center of the wave packet as, as going on straight line. And uh, the answer is no, 
but uh, we want to get into into this in, in more details. So uh, here is um, how to say solution of your homework, uh, which I, I did myself before offering it to you. But uh, uh, I'm, I'm asking you to do it yourself. Compose the video same as Nate taught us and sent as a, as a so. Here is the box, here is the distribution. And uh, if we involve on the ground and uh, first excited state, then it will, uh, instead of moving as a narrow distribution from the wall to the wall, it, it's more like uh, two rods and piston in the, in the engine in, in going into the opposite phase. The normalization, the area under this curve is always the same but it, it, uh, we can interpret it as moving forwards and backwards, right? Uh, it never violates our boundary conditions. On the boundaries, it's always zero, right? So it's bumping into the wall, but it doesn't touch it. And uh, it's always a continuous uh, function. Or if you compute expectation value of position at each time, how would you expect it to evolve over time? So we begin, it's about 0.3, then it moves here, it's uh, about 0.7, and then it moves in between, right? Here and there, here and there. So it moves between walls, but it starts, it's like a smart electron that says, oh, that's a wall, I don't want to bump into it, I, I better turn around. Make sense? Well, it, maybe it's intuitively, it's, it doesn't make sense, but it, it is what we are going to uh, find. And here is this, um, oscillation so it starts at around 0.3 goes to about 0.7 and then goes forcing back so uh, it is possible to solve it by pen and paper which is a pain or by a computer which is a uh, uh, much easier i wouldn't say it's uh, entertainment everyone would do just for fun but uh, it's somewhat easier so um, there is nothing wrong if a human loves images uh, and it, it is not wrong if human hates equations it's it's just nature of of the brain so uh, this understanding was realized immediately after starting practicing quantum theory and uh, in all textbooks you'll see an image where this uh, popular solution is visualized not like i did a silly way of of doing this uh, caricature of equation but a graphical representation of both eigen functions and eigen energies on the same image. Um, if you will practice uh, educational career, it's I, I'm not offering or asking it. Highly likely you will do you will show the following image to your students in the in the in the future. So um, not not this one, the one after. So here are the signs. One with uh, half period, right? Here with uh, one period, and then the next uh, eigenstate will have uh, 1.5 periods, two periods, and, and so forth. So here is the box, right? And the typical way is to show both eigenfunctions and energies by um, combining uncombinable combining y-axis as simultaneously energy and probability distribution or amplitude of probability. Uh, I'm, I'm not asking you if you support or, or disagree. It's uh, a little strange thing, but it is in, in all textbooks. And it is supposed to help humans to, to get through this material. So um, on the, for the energies, there are n square and some constants. If we divide energy by this constant, one would have just one, four, nine, twenty-five, right? And uh, here you have sign with different periods. Uh, oh, so either one plots wave function plus energy, or one plots uh, wave function plus probability distribution to avoid uh, negative values. 
and uh, images like if uh, one goes to probability distribution then instead of uh, negative values one will give always positive like a camel with two humps so like sine square sine two uh, x over two pi x over l square why i'm wasting my and more precious your time on reminding the, th the things um when a couple of homeworks ago you were doing fourier transform right and if you would be uh more mathematically oriented in, in in this course we would probably declare a theorem that any function can be represented as adding together several basis functions with appropriate coefficients Make sense so it's basically your homework of representing some step function with multiple signs and cosines so uh this means this this uh theorem is implemented in the third way to predict future when one goes from um, general solution to particular one needs to match initial conditions one needs to uh, uh, represent the arbitrary function that not arbitrary the function that we know from as a, as a condition of our problem and we need to um, decompose it as a summation of basis functions yes or or you want more words like this or you do not want to have more, more words like this uh three thumbs up four thumbs up um five thumbs up okay um so th thank you we are going to use those basis functions as a as a basis we are going to uh explore our solution as superposition of of those functions those uh will be our basis and therefore we need to have them if we practice third way to predict future we would put these energies into power of exponential because the uh, functions will accumulate phase with a pace defined by the energies so it's uh, unavoidable to, to use it and this image is needed because later on we will plot not wave function which is imaginary and, and uh, not easy for human but probability distribution which is easier to analyze and you already see that these uh, images look like the solution of the of the whole work. Okay, so here is the initial condition that we are going to to match. Mm. Do you do you feel happy by looking on this equation, or, or you need more more words? Who feels happy? Who feels unhappy by looking on this equation? Oh, okay, unhappy or or uh, doesn't <laughs> care. So um, Dirac notation that was introduced by Joshua. Uh, last Friday um, makes equivalence be between vectors and functions and uh, those are symbolized by this uh, angular brackets and uh, like one would correspond to this uh, half period sign two for full period sign and one can have more of those so it's just a way to abbreviate things right now um, particular solution is a summation of general solutions so if you add together one and two it will be also a solution of time independent Schrodinger equation, equation right but uh, it should be normalized if we want to mix them in equal proportions the coefficients in front of one and two should be the same but after normalization they should uh, give one if we take this function and integrate and uh, in order to get 50% of the probability distribution in each, 
one needs to square root of, of one half if we play this wave function. So after taking square of it, it, it will come 50 50. And uh, it can be proved more rigorously. Is it, is it better? So, uh, th better? Thank you. So, how does one come into such a uh, simulation? Is it a way of um, to torture young minds uh, for hard tasks, or or is there is any any science uh, and real life behind it? Anyone wants to guess? Let me let me interview you on your thoughts about this red arrow. Let me count you as a more prayer. Uh, my thoughts? Yes. What do you think about red arrow? It's a, it's a good shape. Uh, <laughs> okay. No, it, uh, it, is it go upwards or downwards? It looks like it's going up. Why? Um, because uh, the energy is uh, a difference. Okay. Okay. Between... Yeah. yeah. Um, do you, are there any labels? Oh uh, yeah. What 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 do they tell? Um. Uh, what do you what do you mean? Uh, I mean, like the the notation or yes. What what is your impression about this notation? Um, it has to do with the, the wavelength and uh. So when one has uh, energy two minus energy one, it's just energy mm. different. But when one uses mm. h bar nu, typically one speaks about what? Um, what is your uh, light? Uh, Yes, thank you. Uh, it was really, uh, yeah. Uh, thank you, Adam. It, it, you, you answered all key questions. I, I just want to give chance uh, of glory to others. But, but basically, seeds of the of the of the answers as there he, he answered everything. Well, Wait, uh, can you comment more, like uh, your vision of red arrow and its connection to the light? Um. Higher frequency is higher energy. Okay, but uh, we are before we were studying just static uh, models. How does it relate to light? How does the energy relate to light? Um, like uh, no, no, no. Can we? expose this particle in the box to the light no yes <laughs> oh yes <laughs> okay okay <laughs> yeah okay thank you for the constructive discussion <laughs> uh nate uh what's your opinion ab about uh light uh irradiating the particle in the box what would it do to it um it'd make it excited excellent excellent uh everyone wait Okay, okay, excellent. Uh, Sibel, Joe, Lola, do you have any, any, do you want to speak anything else? Or it's crystal clear. So, yeah, thank you. So light excites the uh, electron in this box from the ground state to the first excited. But if we expose it to the light not long enough, there is a pro uh, there is probability that it will excite, and there is a probability that it will not excite. And uh, depending on the exposure to the light, this probability may change. It it, not, it is not necessarily fifty percent. It can be like ninety nine and one percent, or it can be hundred percent if you expose it certain certain time. Um, there is an anecdote about <laughs> what's the probability that I step out of the building and will uh, meet a crocodile. 
50% that I will meet and 50% that I, I, I don't. <laughs> oh, it, it's not related here. <laughs> yes. The last statement about there's a probability that the electron goes up, uh -huh. doesn't, or partial. Uh -huh. You said it's dependent on how long it's been exposed to light. Correct. Is it a function of how long or the strength of the light that is being used to cause the excitation? Excellent question. Uh, answer is uh, uh, yes to both. And uh, if you go in more detail to this question, it will be subject of much more advanced course. <laughs> but uh, the uh, probability of this uh, excitation, which we, I don't know, we can call it just C of the state two absolute value squared. So it will be proportional to uh, electric field intensity. Uh, and then it will oscillate as uh, the electric field times transition dipole times T. So uh, if you expose it just for a short time, it will be small percent. If you uh, expose it longer, it will go higher, higher percent that it will excite, then uh, uh, it will like light induced, um, span not spontaneous, but induced emission. So it it's, uh, relates to Einstein coefficients of uh, uh, induced absorption, induced emission, and spontaneous emission. But right now we just uh, accept that there is a way to make an experimental setup where it will uh, create 50% uh, excitation. Yep, thank you for the question. It, 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 it's, it's, it's very deep. Yeah, thank you. So here I, uh, our bracket vectors one and two. And we are uh, going to practice uh, Schrodinger cookbook, third way to predict future. Uh, if we practice it, so <clears throat> I don't know if you, if you recognize it, but here is already application of the Schrodinger cookbook to, the, to this uh, specific problem. So we do have a uh, summation of eigenstates and we limit our summation only to, to two terms. Uh, we do have expansion coefficients, which is one over square root of two, one over square root of two for both of them. Mm -hmm. And we have propagation uh, or phase accumulation, which is proportional to energy so of those states, right? Uh, in uh, everywhere in, in the past, we were making summation sign, but since there are only two terms in summation, we can explicitly write it down. So in some sense, this, the problem is done, right? We plug in functions and, and energies and, and the problem is done. But whether it will help us to find expectation value or position, whether it help us to realize uh, what's the shape of this uh, distribution, indirectly, yes, but we do not see it from the solution. So we need to expand it further. So what we are going to do in the next uh, minutes will be not solving unsolvable problems. We will manipulate uh, equations from one form to another one to make it more digestible for intuitive analysis for, for humans to, to process. So here is um, another way to look on this equation. I'm, I'm uh, making a pause because it will be not challenging intellectually, but uh, uh, it kind of an, an unusual way to think. Right now we were partitioning each term as three factors, function, expansion coefficient and time dependence, right? And expansion coefficients were time independent. 
we can look on this equation from different aspect, considering each term as only two factors. Uh, eigenfunction and expansion coefficient, which is time dependent. So mathematically, we change nothing. We just thinking uh, about it in, in a different terms. So instead of telling that one over square root of two is coefficient and this exponential is time accumulation, we can combine it together and tell that we have time dependent expansion coefficients. Um, this is called Heisenberg representation of quantum theory where uh, coefficients are time dependent. But right now we, we, we don't care about names. We are just going to use this uh, way of looking onto equation to get interpretation of the solution uh, at, at a quicker and more, more efficient way. Okay. Again, there is nothing challenging here. Uh, if one meditate and looks on it slowly, it's all crystal clear and simple. But there are thoughts behind uh, stuff written on, on the on the board on the slides. What is probability distribution, or how does probability distribution depends on the wave function? You all know this answer. Maybe uh, so. so I'm going to take interview. Uh, probability distribution. Uh, how does it? How can it be obtained from the wave function? Well. Uh... So basically we're asking um, how can we obtain it by the wave function? So, um, well, if we like solve the wave functions, determine where the um, the atom will be or the mm -hmm. electron will be at, 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 a t at, if we know the initial um, place the atom is or, or the electron is, and then we solve it for a time that we're looking at the say time equals one second or whatever, mm -hmm. then we can um, using that we can predict of the position of the particle. All correct, but uh, wave function uh, can be imaginary. Yeah, and probability distribution is always it's real. real. Yeah. So what should we do to wave function to make it real? Oh, to make the so basically. Um, Oh. Hold on. I'm trying to think. Um, you, you, you know that. Yeah. And anyone who already uh, can uh, answer, just raise hands. Mm -hmm. okay, yeah. So what would happen if you take absolute value of square root of square wave function? If we take the absolute value of the wave function, then we'll have a positive wave function. It will become real. Will, you, yeah. So, yeah, uh, so th th that's the answer. Oh. So in order to get probability distribution, one needs to take wave function squared. Yeah, thank you. Uh, who's raising hands, Wolver and Nate? It wasn't okay. Uh, it's just closer to come here. So, can you please uh, comment once again? Um, I was just going to say that what is the density of the square of wave function? Yeah, yeah, excellent. Any, anyone wants to? Uh, I was going to say the complex con multiply the complex conjugate. Multiply the complex conjugate of the wave function times the wave function. Okay, yeah, correct. So, and it will make uh, the result uh, real and easier for human interpretation. It will be probability distribution, yes. Yeah, th thank you much for the help. And uh, you all practice it when you were doing normalization in one of the past homeworks. So 
in order to do such interpretation, we may take uh, uh, wave function squared times wave, wave function, right? And one can do it at the last stage when plotting stuff, or one can do it on a way when we compose solutions. So if our solution is this time dependent uh, coefficient times wave, uh, times eigenstate, then here is uh, the conjugated. And if you multiply them, it will be something that will be able to give us probability distribution in a real way. Uh, so the mechanics of this procedure is that uh, each time dependent coefficient is uh, imaginary by its nature. But if you practice this product of the wave function times wave function conjugated, uh, all imaginary things will compensate each other. And it will give us the solutions that we watched at the beginning of the meeting that will oscillate and have no imaginary parts. So now I'm going to open brackets. So there are uh, one bracket with two terms, another bracket with two terms. So two by two will be how much? Huh? Two by two? How much? Four. So there, there are uh, two terms, two terms, and now there are four terms, right? So we are just practicing uh, multiplying this one, which is here and there, times this one, which will be here and there, which is a system. So I'm, I'm just combining all stuff which is time dependent on, on one side of this uh, long factor and everything which relates to a function on, on the other one. And then when opening brackets, it will be four terms. So um, just for convenience that uh, I will declare in, in the later, instead of doing bra times cat here, we do cat times bra, but uh, there is a way to, to do it. And uh, the idea is that everywhere we will have conjugated times not conjugated, which is expected to compensate uh, imaginary oscillations. So if the phase factor happens with the same uh, pace, with the same energy, then accumulating phase is in positive direction and in negative, it will be same like E times X times E minus X, it will be uh, one. Uh, if we have different indices here, it will be slightly, it, it will keep the imaginary factor, but we will see that there is some symmetry that compensate, compensates it. I'm waiting for an uh, caricature to the equation. Yes, here it is. Uh, so it is our object that we are going to plot later. And you, you see that there are four terms and each uh, of the terms uh, consists of uh, four factors, two factors for time dependence and two factors for spatial dependence, right? You see it or it's too ugly to, to comprehend. So for spatial dependence, we have um, product of the, of this uh, eigenfunctions, which will be first and first, second and second. Uh, first and second, second and first. So, uh, and the same pattern is for this coefficients like first, first, second, second, first, second, 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 first. Here is one of the slides with new terminology. Uh, this object, when we take wave function 
in the opposite direction, not bra times cat, but cat times bra is called uh, density matrix because density and probability distribution are related. And uh, it is it gives us nothing new. It's just a way to represent the solution for uh, it. When writing, it gives more lines of text or more lines of equation, but later on, it is, it is easier to interpret. And uh, when we perform uh, so-called trace operation, it will convert this uh, cat times bra into just product of the wave functions. And uh, this product of wave functions is uh, what we, we are going to uh, proceed. So this uh, conjugation of uh, time dependent coefficients and the basis functions. Okay. Time factor and space factor. Uh, the space factor will be product of the, of the basis functions and the time factor, um, some communities called it uh, density matrix element because there are two indices. And if uh, an object with two indices is often called matrix, right? So one can call this product as uh, matrix with indices one, one. This is as matrix with indices one, two. Matrix with index two, one. Matrix with index two, two. And if there are more basis states, it, it, it's just a bigger matrix. So let's go into practical uh, implementation of this equation because we need to see uh, what would happen to this photo excited electron in a, in a, in a box. So the uh, red circles, it will be products of science with the same uh, frequency or with uh, product of science with, with different frequencies. But through high school uh, trigonometric equations, we know what it is and we know how to proceed it. Right? The time dependent factors, which we, we can call uh, density matrix can be processed in the following way. If the indices are the same, then uh, plus and minus exponential of the same pace, uh, gives, makes real and no time dependence. And we have this one half as a one square root of two squared, right? So here we have the same. So it, it's different pace, energy of the second state, but they compensate and give again, 50% probability. So this can be interpreted that there is one half 50% probability to be in ground, 50% probability to be in excited. But in addition to this probability to stay in eigenstates, we see through this expansion that there are some cross terms, which uh, cannot be literally interpreted as that particle stays in the state. It's something, something different, something which holds the motion and which will be responsible for this bouncing into the walls. And these cross terms with different indices, we see there are subtraction of the uh, eigen energies. So E2 minus E1 with plus or minus sign. And it is still imaginary. So uh, if you are bored and tired, you can get irritated or the instructor telling, you promise that the imaginary part will go out, but it's still here. Someone is lying to us. Uh, so I'm, in a couple of next slides, I'm going to offer a trick how to get rid of it and get uh, the uh, image that we, we already were watching. So basically now we combine, instead of this uh, blue boxes, we will plug in this uh, elements of uh, density matrix. Uh, the functions, oh, so for uh, the spatial part, when 
the both indices equal to one, uh, it will be square of, of sine, which will be a little more shallow when we approach to, to the edges. When uh, it is a uh, state number two, it will be this orange two humps of the uh, camel. And those cross terms, it will be product of uh, sine uh, x and sine two x. So uh, sine x is always positive, sine uh, two x flips, flips the sign. So it will be this uh, dashes which changes um, sign, but behaves same as squared. So it approaches zero point, not in a sharp way, but in, in a shell approaching the uh, parallel to the X axis. So our solution in the way prepared for humans will be seen as adding together these four functions. And you see the, there are oranges and uh, purple dashes um, look the same. So because here is sine x, sine 2x, here is sine 2x, sine x. So it looks like three images, but formally there are four functions. By adding these four functions with the time dependent coefficients from density metrics, we are going to get this uh, shape that bounces to the, to the walls. And the solid lines will come with constant, constant proportions. They will not change over time. But this dashed lines will come with proportions, uh, with complex proportions. And by looking tight in these complex proportions, we are going to get rid of imaginary part. And we finally are going to get this uh, bouncing forcing back. Oh, yes, here. So uh, we, those things are the uh, dashed, dashed lines, and they are equal. And the, the factor in front of them uh, differ only by the sign of uh, imaginary imaginary unit. Uh, those row one, two, and row two, one will be proportional to, not proportional, equal to uh, energy with plus E2 minus E1, and then uh, exponential with minus I to the difference of energies. Um, is it clear or it needs more um, words? Okay, yeah, thank you. And when one adds together two exponentials that evolve in the opposite directions, we uh, bring our old body over who tells that imaginary components of these exponentials will cancel. And real component uh, of these exponentials will add together constructively. So we'll have factor two and only cosine, which means that the cross terms, sine x, sine two x, and I'm skipping this pi and o, o, over L, uh, will oscillate as two cosines uh, proportional to energy difference times time. And when we add together uh, these basic functions, each of which multiplied by either constant or oscillating uh, factors, we are uh, getting this solution. So basically the little exercise that we will do tonight uses the stuff that we discussed right now as a background and just programs it, programs only the final stage when we have this uh, product of, of science and uh, oscill oscillatory thing. So we are not, to, tonight we are not solving problem. We're just visualizing already available analytical solution. Whew. I think that's it. So thank you for your uh, 
questions for a really productive uh, discussion and uh, sustaining the, the interview and uh, answering the questions. So uh, done have some rest or pleasure from your other other courses and looking forward to see you tonight at five i'll stay here to answer questions if any but uh, feel free to to leave or disconnect